What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. So RPGs are a genre of game that I love, mainly JRPGs, you know, the ones that were made in Japan. That's a genre of video game I love just as much as the shoot 'em ups. And if you guys watch my channel, it's pretty much all shoot 'em ups 24 seven all the time or whenever I post videos. So in today's video, I wanna talk about five of the best JRPGs I've played and beat for the most part on the PlayStation 4. Now, before I get into that, there's two honorable mentions that I thought were really good. They just didn't make my top five. Uh, the first game is uh, Fairy Fencer F Advent Dark Force. Now, this is a Compile Heart game, or actually it's an Idea Factory game, but if you've played any Idea Factory games or Compile Heart games before, like uh, you know, Hyper Dimension Neptunia or any game in that series, and there's many other games that are like that, it's got light humor. You can tell it's a game, a Japanese game that was uh, translated into English. And, uh, you know, some of these games are really, really silly. But the story in this one's pretty decent. And I did like this game overall, but if you don't like light, immature games, you're probably not going to like it. And because of that, it didn't make my top five. Um, and another game that it, this guy, all right, so this game's probably in your top five. It just wasn't mine because it's very dark and ominous. And there's some aspects of this game that I love, and that's Nier Automata. Now, the aspects of this game that I love, I mean, when you start playing the game, it starts as a shoot 'em up And there's like a couple different shoot 'em up levels. It kind of reminds me of Astabreed, honestly. Um, so if you like shoot 'em up games and RPGs, you know, this is a multi-genre game, or at least it starts off as a shoot 'em up and then turns into an action RPG. But, uh, you know, it was kind of dark for my liking, very dark and ominous. But don't get me wrong, it's a great game, and I didn't play through it multiple times. I actually recently learned that you can play through with you know, 2B, obviously, but then 9S, and there's like you know multiple playthroughs. You can do with this game and a ton of DLC, and they actually released a definitive version of Nier Automata. I probably should buy that one. That way I can have all the DLC on the disc. But those are two honorable mentions in this top five JRPG list. So let's get into the games. At number five, we have Persona 5. Now, these games are in no particular order. I love all of these games. Now, there is one game that I love more than all the others, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, Persona 5 is an Atlas game. It came out in Japan first, then it came over here. Uh, this game in particular came out uh, early in the PS4's lifespan, so it did come out on the PS3 and the PS4. So if all you have is a PS3, you know, get Persona 5, and it might be a couple of dollars cheaper on the PS3, but this tends to be one of those titles, kind of like Ease 8, that really holds their value. Um, as a matter of fact, I bought my copy used, because there were so many copies of this game out there, I knew it would be used eventually for a decent price, but I paid like 30 bucks for it used. I mean, honestly, it's worth it. Um, and I actually got the, uh, the Steelbook I found that used it at GameStop. Um, but this game took me about 120 hours to complete. I know that's a long time for an RPG, and for those of you that have finished this game, you probably finished it in a lot less time. But with the dating sim elements that I'm not too thrilled about, uh, and this game in particular, you use that to kind of get more of the story with different characters, other than Joker, whose character naturally progresses through the game. Um, you know, your, your relationships with men and women, as weird as that sounds, um, kind of develop that way, and you have... That's how you level your character in a weird way, but you'll just have to play the game and experience that for yourself. I highly recommend Persona 5. Uh, I know it's not a JRPG for everybody, but it does have serious tones, making it, you know, for an adult like myself that's almost 40 years old, it's appealing to somebody like me, even with the dating sim elements intact. But Persona 5 is my number five pick for my favorite JRPGs on the PlayStation 4. At number four, we have .hack GU Last Recode. Now, I'm just gonna come out and say it. This is my favorite JRPG on the PlayStation 4. Just in my opinion, as far as action RPGs go, this is the best I've played on the system. Now, see, I told you I had these games in no particular order because if I did, this would be my number one pick. But anyway, so the .hack series was a series that came out on the PlayStation 2. There was four games originally, or there is four games. And then they came out with the GU series that pretty much used the same formula as the original Dot .hack, just to, with different characters, different scenario. And pretty much the formula is for these games, you're, you're playing in an MMO, you know, like those early MMOs that came out in the early 2000s that people played online with their PCs. This game is about people playing a game like that and you take control of an avatar. And in the game, something happens where people in real life go into a coma. So you try to spend your time finding out why is this happening, what's the company's, who's the company that made the game, how are they involved in people going into a coma, is there a conspiracy, what's going on here? 
that's all I'm going to tell you about the game, but that should be enough to get you intrigued because the story in these games, just in my opinion, I think it's really, really, really good. Um, you know, Bandai Namco did an excellent job with this series, and the story is so good, in fact, that you can see how they spread it out among three and four games, depending upon which dot hack you're talking about, um, to try to milk it for every dollar it's worth. But, you know, again, my favorite, and as far as this video is concerned, it's my number four pick for my favorite JRPGs on the PlayStation 4. At number three, we have Exist Archive. Now this is a Tri-Ace game, and for those of you that don't know, Tri-Ace are the same people that made Valkyrie Profile. Now Valkyrie Profile is one of my favorite RPGs on the PlayStation 1. I love the turn-based, timing-based system. I love the, the way they did the story. I even like the way they incorporated the platforming into the game which is something I typically don't like in JRPGs. Uh, the only ones I've ever played that I semi-liked are Popful Mail and Valkyrie Profile, but you can add this game to the list too because so this game is a platformer and then you battle with a turn-based, timing-based system very similar to Valkyrie Profile. There's a lot of similarities. I mean, you could tell the similarities between Exist Archive and Valkyrie Profile right off the bat. As a matter of fact, they're so strong, not the graphics, I'm not talking about the graphics, I'm talking about the story, um, you know, what happens in the story, the gameplay elements, the dialogue, all of that stuff. If you've played Valkyrie Profile for at least for the first couple hours of the game, you're going to notice that stuff when you play Exist Archive. I mean, I noticed it immediately, um, and then I found out that Trice made the game, and then it all made sense to me then. So pretty much without telling you too much about the story of Exist Archive, is there's a terrible accident. Um, you end up, I guess, dying, if you will. Uh, it's you and a friend. Um, and then you wake up in this place, you and your friend, and you don't know what's going on. Are you in heaven? You know, what is this weird, like, you know you're dead, but where are you now? There's this second consciousness, and you don't know what's going on. So the point of this game is trying to determine, you know, what's going on. And is there much more to this than meets the eye? Well, play the game and find out. But anyway, this is a great game. I own this on the Vita and the PlayStation 4. It's a pretty cheap game. I found copies for, I think, 20 bucks a piece, uh, maybe even less than that. Uh, it's totally worth it. And if you like JRPGs like Valkyrie Profile, you have to give this a chance. But anyway, Exist Archive is my number three favorite JRPG on the PlayStation 4. At number two, we have Super Robot Wars OG The Moon Dwellers. And I do believe the OG stands for Original Generation. If you've played any of the robot ties and games on the Game Boy Advance, they were called Original Generation 1 and 2, so I believe that that's what that stands for. But this Robot Wars or Robot Ties and Game, whatever you want to call it, it's in the Robot Ties and Universe, has a couple of characters that you might remember from Super Robot Ties and OG Saga The Endless Frontier on the Nintendo DS, which just happens to be one of my favorite RPGs of all time. Just so happens that it came out on the Nintendo DS and it's a Robot Tizen game or a Robot Wars game that is unlike any other game in the series. I would say that it would have more in common with a game like Valkyrie Profile with the turn-based, timing-based system. So the uh, the battle system in this game is not like that. It's not, it, well, I guess, I guess it kind of is. So it's a strategy RPG with a grid-based system but then all the fighting that takes place is done through animated scenes, which might turn some of you off. And also the strategy RPG element, uh, for people that aren't really too into RPGs, it might turn them off as well. But if you are a fan of Super Robot Ties and OG Saga Endless Frontier on the Nintendo DS, I want to tell you that there's two staple characters from that game that are in this game. And I'm sure you're watching the footage, you can see it's Haken Browning and Ashen. Uh, Haken Browning is the main protagonist in the Super Robot Tizen game on the DS, and Ashen is his, uh, I guess, cyborg counterpart. Um, you know, I guess like Ashen's uh, pretty much the the worker, and Haken's the boss, I guess you'd say. But again, awesome game. I don't want to give any of the story up, but it's definitely part of my top five list. And again, if you're a fan of the Super Robot Tizen OG Saga Endless Frontier game on the DS that I know a lot of people love, me included, I'm probably at the top of that list, you're probably gonna love this game as well, thus making it number two in my list of PS4 RPGs that I love. At number one, we have Yeez 8, the Lake Ramosa of Dana. Dana? I don't know how you pronounce that. What does it go with Yeez 8? So anyway, the Yeez series is a series that I really got into back in the days of the PSP. Uh, they released, I think it was three different games on the PSP. I know there was a Yeez, I think there was a PS2 port. 
Uh, there was a Port of Ease Books 1 and 2. And there was, I don't know, there was some other, E7 I think came out on the PSP, but the Yeez games in the past always had these fixed camera angles, and even if you played Yeez Origin on the PC or the PS4, you still had the fixed camera angles. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but they changed that for, for this game, for Yeez 8, where it would more resemble, like the Dot Hack GU last Recode game, uh, where you have more control over the camera angles. Now, I think for most of you, I think this would probably be, if you've played it, one of your favorite action RPGs on the system. It's just for me, call me weird, for me it's Dot Hack GU Last Recode, but I would actually recommend to you guys to play this game first if you've never played an RPG or if you've never played either of the two, because I think this would probably resonate with more people than Dot Hack would. Um, great game, pretty much without spoiling any of the story. Uh, your name's Adol Christian, and Adol is the main protagonist in all the Yeez games, except for Yeez Origin, um, at least from what I've played. But you're, yet again, you're Adol Christian, uh, you have your friend Dogie with you, and pretty much all the, the games are, are Adol Christian's adventures. So this particular adventure, everyone's on a boat, the boat gets into an accident, you crash land on an island in the middle of the ocean, and you pretty much have to find all the surviving party members that washed up on the island and create uh, a community, you know, I guess like a little utopian society on the island and figure out the secrets of the island. Um, that's pretty much all I can tell you without giving you, uh, you know, any of the story away or anything like that. But great game, and this is one of those games, just like Persona 5, that most of you guys might know about. And also, they held the price pretty good on this one, so it's kind of expensive. But for the sake of this video, Yeez 8 is my number one pick for my favorite JRPGs on the PlayStation 4. Okay guys, so those are just five, well I guess seven different JRPGs if you consider the honorable mentions that I've played on the PlayStation 4 that I really love. Um, I've played a ton more games, but those are just my favorite. But what I want to know is to all those RPG and JRPG heads out there, what are some of the better RPGs on the PS4 that I should be playing? Because I'm sure that some of you out there that are really into the genre can suggest some pretty awesome stuff to me. So let me know in the comments down below, I would love to check out some new games for the system. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. Remember to like this video if you like the video. And if you like awesome video games, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Till next time guys, peace out.